A lot of us are hoping that someday soon, people are going to board a spaceship and travel to Mars, which, on a good day, is at least 40 million miles away. Right now, that trip takes about seven months each way. But since there's no fill-in stations or places to go shopping en route, that means you got to pack your ride with at least 14 months of supplies. We have a lift off. But what if you could build a spaceship that could go much faster and make the round trip in about three months? Well, in this episode's profile, we meet a rocket scientist who thinks he knows how to do it. And his new rocket could shave months off of a commute to the Red Planet. Franklin Chang Diaz loves watching Star Trek with his wife and youngest daughter. I've been a Trekkie since I came to the United States. We watch the episodes over and over and over again. My dad kind of passed this rule that we can't watch it without him. Franklin's favorite character, Mr. Spock. He has a very important position of leadership in his crew. Mr. Spock is a scientist, but he also flies. Like Spock, Franklin knows a few things about being a scientist and a space traveler. He was NASA's first Latin American astronaut to go into space. Lift off of Columbia in mission 61. He's been to space seven times, which ties the record. And he spent the last three decades developing a futuristic rocket engine. I believe that this rocket will revolutionize space travel. We will have the entire solar system at our disposal. Franklin's journey began in the Central American country of Costa Rica, where he dreamt of becoming an astronaut. I was probably about four or five, and I took my sister at two or three in the morning, and we climbed to the roof of our house, and we sat on the roof eating grapefruits with sugar and looking at the stars. The sky was absolutely beautiful. I knew that among those stars, there were other worlds, other places. And I wanted to be there. I wanted to go there. His first step towards space travel, he built a rocket for his high school science fair. It had a little capsule with a small mouse and a parachute. And of course, the first stage was a complete failure. And the mouse survived, uh, which was a real triumph. When he finished high school, Franklin was determined to become an astronaut. His father took out a loan and bought him a ticket to the United States. And he said, look, this is all I can do for you right now. My parents never said, it cannot be done. With only $50 in his pocket and no knowledge of English, Franklin arrived at the home of cousins in Hartford, Connecticut. He enrolled in high school, worked hard to learn English, and let everyone know he meant business. I decided that I would wear a tie and a jacket every single day. And so my teachers were actually a little bit surprised to see this boy you know, come into school with a tie and jacket with some weird dreams about going into space. His hard work paid off, and he won a full scholarship to college. Within four years, Franklin had started a family and was a graduate student at MIT, studying nuclear fusion and developing concepts for an experimental rocket engine. The idea began as a result of my PhD thesis. It was clear to me that chemical rockets, the conventional rockets that we had been using all along, were not really going to give us the capability to travel far. 
to Mars, to Jupiter. He was on the road to building his first real rocket, when in 1977, NASA issued a call for a new group of astronauts. 3,500 would apply, only 15 would be chosen. Franklin was one of those 15. Cuando me llamó, yo, yo era tal la emoción que gritaba, ay, lo logró, lo logró, y mi esposo lloraba, lloraba con lágrimas, pero no, no podía hablar. Yo fui la única mujer en el país que fue la mamá de un astronauta, no hay otra. What I had prepared for, for my entire life was 